Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we are going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. But first, before we dive into that, if you are a fan of movie reviews, 4K Blu-ray reviews, lists, and podcasts, we try to do them all here on the channel. And nothing helps this channel out more than by just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was released on June 30th, 2023. This time it was directed by James Mangle, the first in the franchise to not be directed by Steven Spielberg and not to have any inclusion of George Lucas in the script. Both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, though, still get executive producing credits on this. And up until 2020, this film was actually going to be directed by Steven Spielberg, but he had to bow out. But we still bring back Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. This is going to be his fifth and final time wearing the hat, throwing the jacket on, and using that whip. And they really wanted to give him a proper send-off after the failures that were Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I actually just recently rewatched Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and it's not as bad as I had remembered. I remember leaving that theater back in 2008 pretty angry and upset with what they did with the franchise after the original trilogy was so good. But that was just 16-year-old John, you know, really feeling himself, thinking that he knows every single movie and everything about it. Now, 31-year-old old John went into the theaters yesterday really excited to see Dial of Destiny really excited to see Indiana Jones get that proper send off he deserves and how was the movie it was alright. I definitely think that this was probably still a little bit better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but this movie still doesn't sniff the original trilogy, and that's to be expected. You know, those movies are pillars of the 80s. Harrison Ford was a much younger man. Steven Spielberg was firing on all cylinders. You know, the man is, I believe, 81 years old now, and what he does in this movie is actually incredible for his age. He does. He looks great. He still does all the action scenes himself. He's still acting his ass off. You don't feel like he's phoning it in. You really feel like he cares about this character. He loves this character, and he does such a great job portraying of what you believe an old Indiana Jones would be. And the basic plot of this movie is we open just after World War II, the Nazis have lost, but one Nazi played by Mans Mikkelsen in this movie who would be our main villain, he wants to get his hands on this tool, the Dial of Destiny, which he believes will somehow sway the war back into the Nazis' hands, back into Hitler's hands. But unfortunately, his plan gets ruined by Indiana Jones, who they actually de-aged in this. They de-aged Harrison Ford to look like how he would back, you know, as a younger man, how he would look if they were making an Indiana Jones movies back in the early 90s and I think they did a great job with that I actually thought that this was the best that the aging technology has looked uh, this was right up there with how Mark Hamill looked in the book of Boba Fett they finally I think Disney has really mastered the aging technology they actually apply some of that to Mance Mikkelsen as well and I really do think as far as the visuals goes this was very very impressive I really actually believed I was watching a young Indiana Jones here opening sequence I was invested in the movie I was ready to go I really felt like they had nailed that Indiana Jones tone you know, they throw in the John Williams music and you really feel it. And then it kind of gets into a slower second act as we start really like letting the story unfold. We get introduced to Phoebe Waller Bridge, who I thought was fantastic in this movie. A lot of the supporting actors are great in this movie. You get John Reese Davies pop up in a very small role, but man, it was so good to see him on screen. I mean, just hearing his voice again, hearing the voice of Sala again was perfect. Even if it wasn't the biggest role, I still really appreciated seeing him. We get some little cameos from people you might recognize in the past. I don't want to spoil that for you if you're going into the hair. I didn't know it, so I don't want to ruin it for you guys. It really did, though, make me pop in the theater. And then the second second act I really just feel like the movie kind of really slowed down for a while you know we get an action sequence in there that's really good they start to travel the world a little bit they head to Morocco and Italy and Greece and you know the problem is and this is my biggest flaw at the movie is now the visuals just all look the same they kind of have this Disney fied look to it that you've seen in a bunch of Disney movies recently I mean I was in the theater thinking like this looks very similar to Hocus Pocus 2 and it really shouldn't this movie has a 295 million dollar budget you go to Italy Morocco Greece and they all shouldn't look the same and then even when they're in the u.s it all looks very similar it's an overuse of like this filter that creates like this very warm looking effect i think they were trying to recreate the raiders look in this but it just doesn't work the whole film for me the cgi the cinematography was just not the greatest it actually didn't look good at all i really felt like that was the biggest flaw of this movie was the cinematography itself it just didn't feel like we were world traveling it just kind of just felt like they were on sets but from what i was able to find out they actually did film in 
Morocco and stuff and stuff like that, which all should look beautiful on your screen, but it really doesn't. So that's my biggest flaw with this film is just how it looked. And then the second act itself just slows down the movie. I know we're trying to develop and build up to a third act, but it just felt like, you know, after a great first act, we really slowed it down. The pacing just feels a little bit off, but then it really does pick up again for the third act and has a really satisfying conclusion to this movie that I really did appreciate. And I really do think that that actually ends up saving the movie and giving Indiana Jones the proper send off that he deserves. So I really do feel like at least they nailed the landing. They gave him the send off he deserved. At the very least, I could actually say that this was a proper finale for Indiana Jones. Just not the greatest of films to get there. That's the only thing. James Mangold is a great director, so I know he can do it, but it just felt like, you know, probably there were too many hands in the kitchen. There's a bunch of co-writers on this movie. You know, Steven Spielberg backed out. So I feel like James Mangold came in to kind of save the movie. James Mangold has directed such great movies. His last two movies, Logan and Ford vs. Ferrari, are both great, so I know he can do it. All the actors do a great job in this movie. So, you know, you really can't say that there's too much bad in here. It just feels too generic and too much like a regular movie. And for a movie with a $295 million budget, the Indiana Jones name attached to it, it shouldn't be as forgettable as it is. And that's my biggest disappointment about this movie. But if you're going to be going into this movie thinking that it's another Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I don't think you'll be offended by that. I just think it shouldn't be as forgettable as it is. But I still think that it's something that's worth going to the theater to see, especially if you're an Indiana Jones fan, because you're going to get those nostalgic feelings. You're going to have a good time at least watching Harrison Ford do it one more time. And you really should see his proper send-off in theaters I feel like I think it's one of those movies that yeah it might not be the greatest of movies but it's fun enough it feels like a summer blockbuster something you should see and I do think that even though it doesn't sniff the original trilogy of Indiana Jones movies it's still a decent enough adventure that you're gonna want to check out so I would give this overall a score of 7.5 out of 10 check this one out and let me know what you guys thought of it but it's also Friday guys and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway Every Friday on the channel, I ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one in the comment section below. As long as you do that, you come back to Monday's video. I put your name on a magic wheel. We spin that bad boy two times. The two names it lands on, they have their choice of the digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. And we're talking Indiana Jones and Harrison Ford. So I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite Harrison Ford question? And... Who is your favorite character in film history? Answer one of those questions in the comments section below. And then don't forget to come back to Monday's video to see if you are this week's lucky winner. And guys, we're only 10 subscribers away from 2,000. And as I announced earlier this week, once we hit 2,000 subscribers, we are going to be giving away Skinamarink on Blu-ray. This Blu-ray right here. So once we get to that 2,000 subscriber mark, I hopefully we hit it before Monday's video. And I'll let you guys know the rules for this giveaway there. Just wanted to let you guys know that is coming. So make sure you guys are ready for that giveaway. So make sure you guys leave those comments in the comments section below. And then while you're down there, nothing helps the channel out more than by just simply liking this video, subscribing to the channel, going out in those streets, and telling all your friends about us. We'll be seeing you around. Thank you.